What's good, everyone? Welcome back to the show, Recap with Mo. Today, we're going to talk about a new show that I watched over the weekend, and I found it pretty interesting, just to say the least. Um, It's actually six episodes in its entirety for season one. So um, it was a quick look at, uh, I divided it up within three days. So because the brother got other things to do than just watch TV, right? So um, <laughs> so I went ahead and uh, checked it out. Actually, I started on Thursday, I believe, Thursday evening and um, finished everything off yesterday. So but before we get into this discussion about this show and recap, Go ahead and hit that like button if you have yet to do so. Also, subscribe to the channel if you are yet to subscribe. Um, We're going to get into some discussions here, and I always like to see the comments down below. So if you could leave a comment of your thoughts. If you haven't seen the show, you probably can't really talk a lot about it. But but if you have, go ahead and leave some comments. You know what I'm saying? So, all right. So let's go ahead and get into the discussion. Let's go. All right, all right. So the show that we're going to talk about today is called Riches. All right, so this show um, is a show that I found on Amazon. Um, It's a show that's based out of London, and um, it has a Nigerian family who um, a father by the name of Stephen Richards who started a um, cosmetics empire in London and um beyond all the odds he was he became successful so anything where we can see black power black money um black owned I'm down for it and I hope you guys are as well so let's go ahead and get into the recap of um season one episode one um entitled um see trouble coming All right, so the the show opens up with Stephen Richards, the who's the founder and owner of a black-owned cosmetics empire, being interviewed by this by this gentleman, um, and he's asking him all types of questions. And then he asks a question about his previous marriage. So obviously, we we find out pretty early that he's been married at least twice, and. Richards um, is like, well, do you have any other questions? And that was pretty much it on the opening scene, um, on the opening scene for this show. So um, next we see his daughter, um, Nina Richards, being congratulated for closing the largest um, merchandising deal in company history for um her company in which she works, which is actually in the States, in the United States, um, in New York City. So to celebrate, she and her team, they go out to a restaurant. And, you know, while she's there, she receives a phone call from her father, Stephen Richards, um, back in London. And um, from the look on her face and her demeanor, she's obviously not pleased of receiving a phone call from him at this time. So you can tell there's some tension there. Um, we're going to talk about it a little a little bit later. So, But she's not happy to hear from him, obviously. Um, and then next, we're back at Stephen's office where he has a brief conversation with his longtime assistant who lets him know, you know, she's getting ready to leave. She's done for the day. And he was like, okay, you know, pretty much have a good night. Um, briefly after that, um, after she leaves, Stephen has a heart, uh, has a heart attack. Oh, you know? right. And... Um, <laughs> He's rushed to the hospital. Next, we're introduced to multiple members of the family, and it it moves fairly quickly at this time. So um, starting with Stephen's wife, current wife, let me just say that, Claudia, who's in a hotel room right now being massaged by a young man. Um, It don't look like, uh, (laughs) it doesn't look like she was getting a normal massage either. So I'm going to just put it at that. Um, but it looks like she and old boy just, you know, just got down or they getting ready to get down. So, um, so she's receiving a massage from this guy, um, who I didn't know who it was at that time, um, when she receives a phone call, but she decides not to pick up. She didn't want to be interrupted, if you know what I'm saying. So, 
Um, so she decided not to pick up. Next, we're introduced to Stephen's son, um, Gus, who's who's getting lit at a party or a club or something like that in some type of con- uh, some sort of context. When when he receives a phone call from his sister Wanda, and um, I guess she conveys to him of the situation, he immediately leaves the party and his friends, you know, abruptly. Um, next, we're introduced to. Um, the other sister n- named Delicia, who's prepping to shoot a video of some sort. And then she receives a phone call. Also, she ignores the call completely by cutting the phone off completely. So now, so now we see Gus is on the road. He's, he, it looks like he's speeding, but obviously he's not from the conversation that he has with, um, the police officer that pulls him over. Um, so he gets pulled over, but he's racially profiled. Obviously you can see in the, in, in the scene that, um, he wasn't speeding, he wasn't drunk and the, the officer pretty much still, um, you know, treated him some type of way and, uh, and questioned him about the vehicle stating that this is a really nice vehicle. And, you know, it, it's sad because even it's sad because all across the globe, and I wish we as black folks could understand this, all across the globe, we are treated in this manner, like regardless of where we are in the world, when you are a successful black man or, or, or black woman, or if you're, you're a poor white um, black man or black woman, it doesn't matter what your status is, where you are, they're going to treat you however they want to, regardless of the fact. But definitely, if you have some sort of means, you look to be doing well, he's done well for, for himself. So he has a very nice ride, man. So, But it's just sad that we always have to go um, through these things and as a people. So I could talk so much more about that, but I'm not. But um, pretty much the, the police officer, after delaying him a little more, obviously lets him go because the next thing we see where um, Gus um, walks into the hospital. Now, while that's going on at the same time, we head back to the States and um, we're introduced to a guy named Simon, who's a hairstylist in New York, obviously. And um, he receives a text conveying that Stephen is dead. So obviously I knew right then and there that he was obviously related to or possibly, yeah, more than likely he was related to Stephen in some sort of way. So so next we see Nina. She dropping off some of that fire. I mean, she an old boy that she just met at the restaurant. They end up getting it in. Um, and she pretty much gets up finishing and she's like all right well that's been good you know what i'm saying and old boy was like where you going she was like i mean you gotta go i was like dang <laughs> i was like dang man look man we're not even gonna get into that discussion right now but she did what she did man and old boy was a little pissed off about it and uh he made his way down the steps, man, to, you know, to jettison. But um, on his way out, Simon, who the guy we just previously saw in the hair salon, um, was getting ready to come into the house. So obviously she and Simon are brother and sister. So um, he has news to share with her, obviously, that Stephen, their father, is dead. Um, when he first shares the information with Nina, you could tell by her disposition that she's hurt, but she has this wall built up where she feels like she has to be strong. And she was like, oh, I mean, I thought it was something else, but you could tell she was hurt. She had a relationship with this man initially before everything went down. We find that out later on as the show goes on. So, um, but not to mention um, he also called her right before he died. So that's a tough pill to swallow. So, um, so pretty much he convinces her, um, to go to London, to go to the funeral. So then we head back to London where the family is in the house 
and his current family, let me just say that. And they're enjoying, you know, they're arguing, going back and forth about what their daddy would have wanted and all this stuff. And the mother, Claudia, is sitting on the couch. She, you know, she's trying to collect herself. And then immediately she jumps up and, and she says, look, enough is enough. This isn't what your father would have wanted, all this stuff. And while she's in the midst of talking, um, that young guy that she was in the room with, getting uh, receiving a massage from walks into the room drops some things out on the table and she looks at him from the side from her peripheral a little bit and uh, she's like look this is a family discussion pretty much get yourself out of here and uh he looks at her sideways and he, he walks on out so all right so next we we head over to the funeral and um next we're seeing nina and Simon flying in to London, obviously London. And we find out later on that the stepmother, Claudia, had moved the funeral up. So they missed the entire funeral of their father, which you already see at this point that it's not going to go down well from that point on because they already have some type of dysfunction within the family in London, then you're bringing this the two other children into this con into this context. It's already a mess. It's about to go down, bro. So pretty much, Simon asked his sister, like, "Do you still want to go?" She was like, "Hey, yeah, I want to go." So they pretty much ride in, uh, ride over to the site, ride over to the crib, and they get to the crib, and the family is already arguing. Um, so then we get a glimpse of Stephen's siblings. He got two sisters and he had a brother. And they're all sitting on the couch talking about he, how she's already spending the money. He ain't been dead for 24 hours, yada, yada, yada. And um, so obviously they don't care for this woman. And, and so I know it's about to get better. So um, Wanda tells the others, her, the other siblings that Claudia is all pissed off because... Um, Gideon, who we find out is um, Stephen's friend and attorney, longtime attorney. So um, she's not pleased that Gideon has invited the other, you know, the other set of, you know, kids. So she's upset about that. So we later find out why. So we head back to the car and Simon and Nina are talking and she was like, I just don't understand why. Um, they will move the funeral up like this. But she said, I don't know what they're hiding, but essentially I'm going to find out what's going on. So Simon is like, I'm here for it. You know what I'm saying? And I love his personality, man, because he's going to be riding out for his sister. So at least for right now. So we will see how everything goes. Um, so Steve and them, they, they show up. At, uh, not Steven, Simon shows, Simon and Nina shows up at the house and um, getting and meets them at the door. He pretty much says, you're right on time for the reading of the will. And Simon is like, let's go. You know what I'm saying? Let, here we go. You know what I'm saying? So he's ready for it. So um, Claudia and the family, they're sitting at this long table inside. I assume it's the dining room or possibly a meeting conference room or something like that at the crib. And all the family members, including the um, assistant and and um, Claudia's friend, Andre, is there in the meeting as well. So during the meeting, um, Stephen has recorded instructions that he's given to Gideon outside of his will as well. But on the video, he pretty much conveys what where he wants um, things to go and how he wants everything thing to go down. So um, initially he says there's a, a, a million pounds for his assistant, his longtime assistant. Um, he's given like 500,000 pounds each to his siblings, which they seem like they were fine with it because they actually love Stephen, not his money. Secondly, um, thirdly, he gives um, to his current wife, Claudia, he gives her the house and he gives her and obviously uh, enough salary per month to be able to do what she needs to do. And then for the, the, the current children that he has through Claudia, 
he gives them 30 million dollars, um, 30 million pounds, sorry, to split amongst the three of them. Is it three or four? I think it's three of them. So, so they seem, you know, I guess obviously cool with that at that moment. So then the camera pans off to Gus, who's his only son with Claudia and, um, Stephen talks about the company when it comes down to the company, who's going to take over the company, etc., etc. So, um, Gus has this look on his face like, yeah, I'm about to come up. You know what I'm saying? I've been putting in this long work. Um, I'm due for it, right? So, um, as Stephen is talking more and more, you're like, this isn't going to pan out well for Gus. So, um, and I would be right about that. So, Stephen actually gives the company and all of his shares over to Nina and Simon. And of course, Claudia splits her wig, man. She gets up, cusses out everybody in the room, tell everybody to get up out the house. And, <laughs> and it's crazy, man, because the family, the siblings who did not, who does not like Claudia, obviously, they walking through the room, they dancing and chanting, man, and I was, I was, I was tripping, man, because, <laughs> um, but yeah, man, so Simon and Nina can't believe it, they like, what in the world, and then um, Claudia walks up on, on Nina talking about, look, girl, I, I'm, I'm gonna sue you, pretty much, I'm gonna take you to court, and uh, it ain't gonna work out, I ain't gonna take this line down like your mama did, Nina walked up on uh, on Claudia, like, say it again, like, I bet you won't. And, and uh, her brother Simon was behind her. He said that she ain't about that life. Essentially, that's what, <laughs> that's what he was saying to her. They brought that New York swag over to London, and they said, no, she ain't about that. And they walked up out, man. So that's how that scene ends, man. But Claudia is blaming all of this on Gus, talking about he's embarrassing me and talking about how Stephen wanted to make a fool of her. But you could tell already what her main concern was. It was about the daggone money. So it wasn't even about love at that point. It was about what's in it for me. And that's why I could see already that the siblings, Stephen's siblings, do not care for her at all because they already know what she's about. And they even said that she's, um, you know, she's all about that money. All right. So the next thing we see is Nina and Simon. They're sitting down. They're discussing the whole business situation uh, and what transpired. So they're chuckling it up, talking about, hey, we pretty much just going to get out of this deal and we'll sit down with Gideon. So on the other side of town, the family, um, with Claudia as well as her three kids um they're pretty much talking about they can't believe that dad did this to them and you know why would he you know not do well by us and Gus is like he didn't trust me with the company and Claudia is like no Gideon is the one that set all of this stuff up and we're gonna fight to go get back what's ours and she says we're essentially we're at war right now and of course, the kids were like, what in the world is she talking about? So um, anyway, we'll go past that. Nina and Simon um, meet with Gideon. Gideon is trying to tell Nina and Simon pretty much, hey, your father wanted you to take over the company. He's been keeping up with you. And this is finally a time where Nina actually hears that her father has been keeping up with her. And as hard as, you know, she wants to be for a daughter to hear that her father kept up with her, even though they did not have a great relationship or she had not heard from him for 20 plus years, it was good for her to hear the fact that her father, who she obviously looked up to, and she got a lot of her business, uh, her business acumen and all that stuff from, like, she she wanted to hear that, even though she's she's trying to be hard at the same time. But daughters need to hear that affirmation from their fathers. That's where that's where they build their confidence and all of those things. So she's built up this shell, and now I can obviously see why she treats the guys like she does. And, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But anyway, so. Getting in pretty much goes on to say that he wishes that they would stay and not sell the business. And um, 
And then he goes on to say as well that he believes that Claudia and the family would actually destroy the business. So Nina's like, well, they can have it. You know what I'm saying? So we move on from that scene and then we head back um, to Claudia walking inside, uh, walking into the office like she's the boss and um, ignoring everyone that's trying to give her um, their condolences of her loss. And she's just being a rude ass. So um, she walks into Andre's office. So now that we know that she was the one that set him up with the job, she got Gideon out of that role so she could place Andre in that position for, I guess, for multiple reasons. And um, so she's so she's talking to him about why you didn't know about it. He said, hey, Gideon is trying to hide all his steps. And she was like, well, I got you in this position to keep up with what's going on. She said, I didn't go through everything that I went through with, with Steven so someone else can come in and benefit from it. So she says, essentially, you better get it done. And she lets him know that if not, uh, if Nina or Simon come in, you're going to be the first thing they're going to get rid of. So you might as well, you need to figure out something. So um, Gus is at the club once again. And obviously, all the time we've seen Gus, he's been either at a club or somewhere out with these, I don't even know what to call them, but these freeloading friends of his who are constantly running up a tab on his on his account so it's just, is it me or i i don't know i just don't hang out with dudes like that like we all do pretty well for ourselves but i'm just saying like i'm not i'm not sitting up here and i'm just you know somebody's always on my tab we're not doing it like that so the next thing we see nina wakes up about three o'clock in the morning thinking back to a time when she and her mother was in uh, it looks like a, a store of some sort. I'm assuming it was a hair store because of the, the latter scene that, that that you saw in that video. But um, her mom. Now, this was the, the I think the pivot point in this in in this episode because I think we as black people need to hear this more and more and more. So there was somebody that was following them in the store, I guess one of the store owners or one of the workers at the store, and they were pretty much telling um, Nina and her mom in the store, and she was like, why is this guy following us? And her mom was getting ready to explain to her why, and then she turns around and says to the gentleman in the store who's following them, like, can you explain to my daughter why you're doing that? And then the next thing that we see they in the front of the store, and she is um, telling her her daughter this, and and this is what I'm. This is the message of episode one. She says, um, "They will always treat us like nothing. They will always treat us like nothing, because until black people have their own, until we own our own shit." They will keep their foot on our necks. And she tells Nina at that point, she tells Nina at that point to never allow them to do that to her. Never allow people to hold her back. And I think that's where she gets that that, that whole fight mentality that she has right now. Like, I'm not going to give up. I'm, I'm going to fight against any and everybody that gets in my way. Right? So... She does that. She sees that scene. She looks over at her suitcase. And then she pretty much, I guess, goes back to sleep. All right, so next we see the family is actually in the, in, in a conference room at the office. They're waiting on Gideon, Nina, and Simon to come in, I assume. And um, Nina goes to the hair store, and she sees the merchandise. Now, as we saw in the beginning of the episode, she just got congratulated for being the number one um, for closing the deal for a merchandising deal. So in history of the company. So she already, she's on point with her job. Like she knows exactly what she's doing when it comes to merchandising and running, you know, running that type of business. So she goes to the store and it looks like a hair store and she sees the merchandise on the shelf and she looks around the store and she sort of she sort of takes all of it in. And then we see the scene where they're actually coming into the conference room with Gideon. And um, 
the family is waiting and they're all in the background. Like, thanks for making the right decision and all this stuff. Like, a lot of condescending comments and stuff like that. So, they're in the background talking and Nina sits behind the desk and she's getting ready to sign because Simon has pretty much conveyed to her that he would pretty much sign anything that she signs because he trusts her. So she's getting ready to sign and and Claudia, of course, opens her mouth and says, you know, your father was a genius for creating this company. And Nina looks at, at Claudia in disgust and says, my mother founded and created this company in our kitchen in a flat. And then Claudia comes back and says, um, well, she couldn't do that and she couldn't hold her husband either. So when she made that statement, I was like, dang, like you could have held your mouth. If you could have held your lips together for 20 to 30 more seconds, you could have had the company. And see, you got to learn how to close your mouth sometimes, man, because right here, it, it bites her in the ass, man. Like, look, Nina is not that girl. She's not that chick that you can just talk to any type of way. You're going to have to get her respect. And Claudia has not been that person that that could get her respect. So with Claudia making that statement, Nina being, being the type of person she is, she's like, all right, you know what? The deal is off. And Simon is like, hold on. She was like, uh-uh. He holds back and he was like, okay. But then Claudia goes off talking about getting you. You need to get it back in order. Like, you need to get this back on the table. And Simon lets her know. He, he said, oh, she ain't coming back. <laughs> she ain't coming back, homie. You might as well. And so Claudia is still going off. And Andrew's like, man, you could have just been quiet a little bit longer. You know, if you and then, of course, Gus trying to protect his mom. But he should have said the same daggone thing, bro. Like, hey, look, we had the deal on the table. Your arrogance, your your the, your energy, your negative energy that you are giving off just cost us the deal. That you talking about was for our family's rights. But the reality is this. Stephen left the company in control of Nina and Simon for a reason. He didn't leave it to you. He didn't leave it to Gus because he knew that they would not be the ones to to go against what he needed to be done for that company. He could trust them. And all I'm saying is this, and this is what I got, and, and that's pretty much how the episode ends. She's going to take over the company. That's what it looks like. So, um... And she's deciding to stay in London. So we just saw that she's up for a great move back home in the States. But it looks like from the first episode that she's actually going to stay in London um, with all of this stuff going down. So um, so let me know your thoughts, man. If you've seen this episode, um, go ahead and leave some thoughts down below. If you haven't seen it, go back and look at it and then check back in and, and tell me your thoughts on it because... There, there were a lot of things that I really want to, I'll possibly, I, I will pro- possibly make a second video not talking about this episode in its entirety, but some of the things that stuck out to me. And I really want to talk about the father and daughter relationship situation, because as much as she didn't want to talk about her father, as much as she wanted to, she wanted to get away from her father or anything attached to her father, her father was in her. And you can't outrun what's in you. And he even said it in the beginning, like father, like daughter. Like, it's already in you. You are a chip off the old block. And we can try to run as we can try to run as fast as we can to get away from something. When it's in you, it's in you. So anyway, I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm not gonna talk too much longer about it. Let me know your thoughts. Also hit that like button down below, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. Peace.